Okay, hey uh, everybody, thanks for joining us. Um, it's been a couple busy weeks for everybody. Um, I know there's a lot of people in the community that have been doing doing uh, startups, trying to get our arms around um, the latest tokenomics, um, all the changes in smart contracts, as well as uh, trying to understand our whole uh, dust uh, initiative, I'll call it now, because it seems like the dust isn't settled, <laughs> if I may. But, um, I, I, you know, what I always like to do is in the beginning, just kind of um, toss it out there. Um, are there any um, points of view or news or anything that anybody has that they want to share before we get into anything here? I don't know if you if you're already aware of it or not, but this is something we mentioned in the hackathon's closing part also, and it really shows how amazing ISCP is. Mm -hmm. That in our hackathon, all the finalists used all the instances that ISCP offers at least once. We had EVM, we had Go, we had Rust, we had TypeScript, all the different languages that you can code smart contracts in. This really shows the diversity this protocol has to offer and how amazing it is. Uh, what yeah, a great I wanna, comment. Yeah, I, I want to add to that because um, two of the teams actually came to me and said they, they'd they only seen like EVM smart contracts and they said, we can't use smart contracts. We don't know Solidity. We don't know EVM. And then I was like, have you had a look? Because uh, it's available in different languages. And this this accessibility to the technology it just opens up the doors for so many new people to enter into this space. It's just insane. I think like, so. Yeah. These teams wouldn't have been able to use smart contracts if it wasn't available in, in different languages. And I think that's it's amazing. Hats off to the to the team for that. Yeah. Uh, so anybody uh, just anybody uh, use the TypeScript? You guys, anybody know? There was yeah. one team. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. I'm amazing. How I many of you think about that? Just showed up like a, a you know, a, literally maybe a week and a half ago, right? So, um, amazing. That's just awesome, Eric. Um, that that was pretty good. And Eric, you kind of work that program, right? So you you I think you spoke, right? And were you helping people? Uh, well, I I was uh, trying to uh, keep people afloat if they bumped into problems. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I fixed a few problems. That that's always a good thing for for a hackathon, right? It, uh, oh, for sure. It it, it shakes the bug tree. <laughs> so yeah. I I I've, I've been fixing some bugs and helping out and uh, helping people who had trouble uh, setting it up. Even even still <laughs> having trouble setting it up. But the the the, the most clear was that uh, there's a, a one thing missing in the page uh, for the schema tool that is how to uh, uh, compile for your languages and how to set how to set up your compiler properly. So that's uh, that's something I'm going to add. Oh, and good. As, so that was uh, as, helpful. Yeah, and as to uh, that whole uh, language thing that they used everything uh that was uh some personal validation for my uh my <clears throat> on my part because i've been pushing this since the beginning that we needed uh, a general vm with multiple languages and then at first they were uh, saying no we're only going to do rust and i stubbornly kept the go going as well <laughs> because that was just uh well, the w the way I set it up, it was easy, right? Yeah. And then, <clears throat> and at some point, uh, I uh, I just for laughs implemented a, a Java uh, version, and that uh, that worked. Uh, which, by the way, currently has been abandoned for a while. Uh, I I would need to get back that one back up to speed. But uh, then then the TypeScript thing came along and uh, and and implemented that. And then the fact that they're, they're using all three languages uh, mm -hmm. really points out that what I said, that developers want to be able to use what they what they can, what they already know. They right. don't want to learn a new complex language and, uh, and, and have to 
especially in a hackathon. You That's don't what I was going to say. In a hackathon, you curve. just want to know what you need. You already, we want to know, use the tools that you already know. Like you're trying, yeah. to, you're trying to invent because like the last thing you need, need to do is trying to figure out how does a programming language work, right? So Ex yeah. Exactly. So that worked out really well. And I was very pleased to, to hear them say that uh, all languages had been used. Well, that's really uh, what this, what this, this is literally yeah. my personal pet peeve about the whole uh, <laughs> thing and then then it shows up uh, as uh, being I an important part of this mm -hmm. uh, this whole hackathon thing so so yeah, so I, Eric gets to say I told you so <laughs> well <laughs> no that, that's, that's, that's fun but <laughs> that's a bit of my spiel actually because uh, lit literally uh, how many times I'm I'm being well, let's just say disregarded, right? Because I'm just the old fart, <laughs> but they forget uh, they forget that I have more than forty years of experience in the field, right? And so yeah. I know what a, what a developer needs and what a developer wants. And mm -hmm. I was building tools for developers. I wasn't building tools for you and I are simpatico, my friend. Uh, yeah, un, 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 Uncle Uncle Joe who wants to create a stable coin. I don't see that happening, right? Uh, yeah. My my little sister creating a smart contract. I don't see that happening, especially since I don't have a little sister. But anyway, uh, I I mean, con programming is hard already, right? Yeah. We we see how many bugs there are. Smart contracts. You don't want them to have fucking bugs because smart contracts are always, or, or in a lot of cases, uh, containing value. And any bug can be exploited to extract that value. So you want people who know what they're doing creating smart contracts. You don't want it to be... Uh, that. That's why I'm always... Uh, uh, railing against people who want no-code environments and such. No code is very limited, right? You you only get uh, mm -hmm. what the no code provides, and uh, maybe what the no code creates is properly tested. You have to hope for that. Mm -hmm. But I'd, either the moment you want to step out of the no code stuff, uh, you need a programmer, and then you need somebody who knows the shitload because now you need to fight against the no code shit. And yeah. So yeah. yeah. I, yeah, it's, I, the old, it's the old. I don't. I don't. I don't get all that. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the old um, having an app generator, and then okay, when it doesn't adapt to it, how do you deal with it? Um, and it just becomes. Yeah. And then you kind of wonder why did I have an app generator? Because I'm end up having to write the code anyhow. So. Or, well, or, you, you yeah. see it with all kinds of frameworks, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I I remember a framework, uh, that about twenty years ago. Uh, it, it was a really nice framework with database access and whatnot. Uh, oh, wait a minute. A very good example, Microsoft Access. <laughs> Microsoft Access allows you to build user interfaces and whatnot, but a lot of stuff needs to follow their rules. And the moment you need to fight against that and, and want some, some control to behave slightly different, you, you would be literally fighting mm -hmm. right it, it, every time you thought you had it licked something else some, some other edge case would show up that yeah was like, yeah, oh, yeah i actually yeah i actually know exactly what you're doing i actually work for a consultancy that dealt, dealt with that for a while so yeah you are absolutely right yeah so uh, i learned i learned from that kind of stuff and yeah uh, and, and and i try to take that in every decision that i make uh, with programming languages and interfacing and whatnot, it, it it needs to be stable. It needs to be adaptable, and and the hurdles need to be as minimal as possible, right? I need to. I I, I want to take away every freaking hurdle. So <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's my personal mission. Makes makes sense. Okay, I'm going to just uh, really briefly talk about um, the mentor program. You know, I've mentioned this every meeting. Um, it's interesting. I've I've had a lot of people reach out, and they want to do it. It's it's kind of funny though. Everybody is, uh, you know, um, an apprentice, <laughs> but there's no mentors that have stepped up. So uh, that's going to mean we're going to have to probably adjust the strategy on that. 
um, maybe form uh, groups. And I also um, have been thinking, and I've been talking with Dave about this. Um, uh, well, Meryl just says, hey, I'd be happy to step up. Okay, cool, uh, Meryl. Um, I'll make sure that you can surface uh, after your hackathon and um, and then we'll tap into that because that would be really handy. So, but it's gonna be, uh, we'll start trying to get, so I've got Merrill as a mentor and if anybody else can be a mentor, uh, uh, that would be, be cool because I think that there's a pl plenty of people that are willing to learn and excited to learn, but they've all been saying, hey, I'm, 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 I need that guidance. Um, so, uh, I have this idea about morphing um, kind of what we're doing with what's happening or about to happen within the Dow Pioneers group. Um, and, and this is open for discussion and I want all, uh, everybody to weigh in. Um, you know how we're talking about projects, right? And which one should we work on? Uh, Dave and I were talking that right now in that group, in the new pioneers group, um, there are actually uh, spontaneously this happened uh, groups that are deciding to uh, coalesce around a couple ideas where um, within the pioneers group they want to develop a DAO or maybe one or two different DAOs, and people are actually right now um, reaching out to each other to just on the fly kind of form um, groups uh, around these uh, DAO concepts. So for the next next week, like, and these meetings are happening every day, but um, I, what I anticipate to be happening today and the rest of the week is people are going to be aligning themselves with one or a couple of these DAO concepts. Now, um, like all, what always happens is that most of these guys or a lot of these people, there's not the uh, there are people that understand um, real world concepts, but they don't they're not pro uh, programmers. So um, kind of thinking would it be kind of cool to uh like try to match up each one of these dow programs uh, or dow concept projects within the pioneers and see if we could actually get have our own um x team guys help you know build a functional dow around those concepts they don't have to be fully flushed out um but this would be kind of an interesting example of how we can use smart contracts to actually deliver dows which if you think about it seems like everything that we're doing, right? I mean, in, in, in a grand, grand a, a scope here. Um, and I'd like to kind of just like, now that I've said that, see if you guys, if you guys don't like the idea, that's fine. But it also just seems like there might be a, a kind of cool thing to try to pull off. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Too crazy of an idea. Well. I'll share my thoughts. And when Greg and I were discussing it, I mean, I think it's it's two ways. I mean, for those that know something about smart contracts, it's also a good way to be involved and mentor uh, the people that are out there building. Uh, and then for all those that are actually learning, it's also, you know, you're gonna it's 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 a good time to absorb what's going on and and see. So being involved in projects is how I learned from the best people that I was involved with. And, and it was just a matter of just taking that step in and getting involved. So that's why I thought, at least from my point, it was a good idea. Anybody else in this group belong to the Pioneers group? No? Okay. I do, well, but I haven't had a chance to get in a meeting yet. Yeah, <laughs> it's too much for you right now. I totally understand that. Maybe, maybe From next, next week. week yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, that's a six week program, but I actually think that there's a couple of different DAO concepts. I mean, that, that makes sense. You know, um, every DAO consists of smart contracts. And um, uh, what what's the differences are, are that going to be to be programmed in is that really generally is just the concepts of um the way that voting goes down and governance goes down so some people like right now um when the initial vote for bill versus burn um is using what we would call a um one uh, one token one vote approach 
But there are other approaches that are completely not involving anything to do with how much token, how many tokens you have, but it's based upon who you are as an individual, right? And proof, proof of your humanity. Um, and so that would require a little bit of different thinking, but and different smart contracts. Um, but that would be the concept there. So um, a lot of food for thought. Okay, so um, I will uh, probably at the end after this maybe send out an email to you guys to see if there uh, or uh, just another statement in general to see if that con concept resonates with you guys. Um, the next thing we were going to talk about was just the AMA topics now, uh, or what was discussed yesterday in the AMA, and there's a lot to learn there. I'm not sure everybody's been able to view that AMA or uh, delve into it. So uh, we kind of like at the last minute thought that that might be something cool to talk about. Um, but it doesn't look like uh, n anybody's really been able to get their minds around that. So um, we'll bypass that. Um, I will say um, in the Americas group on Thursday night, two nights from today, we are going to, I'm going to go and um, go through and collect the, the time snippets of what seem to be uh, the important points of that AMA and then we'll discuss each one of them like we did two weeks ago for um, in our last AMA um, it seems like I can't tell you how many uh, DMs I got that people really love that approach and I think that for this persp for, for this topic it it's going to be pretty invaluable so um, just letting you guys know that yeah, I think maybe this week was a quite a busy week. I know I I put out a request yeah. for people, and seeing by how many people are are from the X team are here this week, it seems like maybe that was a a bad week to try that. <laughs> yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. If if anyone in the group has the time and wants to recommend some snippets to discuss, it would be much appreciated. Uh, and just post those in the Americas uh, channel uh, for uh, Greg to uh, include with his list. Yeah. Hey, one Scott. thing, um, yeah. can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah we're good. So, um... No, now we can't hear you. We, we, we heard you, but we can't hear you now. It's okay, I press again. Um, there you go. No, you're dropping off. We hear you for a second, then you it drops off. Hold the button down. Yeah, because I and and have to push again and whatever. What the hell? There's a delay. So if the push to talk, you push, and then there's a, like a couple second delay. And so if you like push every one second, <laughs> which I set up an automated routine to do, so I didn't have to keep doing that. But anyway, um, it's um. I think also we have to focus on the differentiators to other smart contract protocols, yeah? Because now mm -hmm. we have something that's really, um, you know, beyond the consensus at the utility now to the IOTA um, network, yeah? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, yesterday we had the German Stammtisch, yeah? And of course, Hans is present there, right? Uh, um, and Hans, of course, now talks about the consensus and how great it is. And it is great, yeah? But I think we need to now really focus more on getting the word out on the smart contract front mm -hmm. because that's more uh, closer to home now than um, code side, yeah? yeah? So I think really to start having people get excited about IOTA with the new tokenization framework and, and all that, yeah, we need to have, let's say, a more focus on smart contracts also in the public. And that also means, uh, you know, when you think about NFTs, right, uh, existing smart contract uh, platforms have limitations compared to the new tokenization framework, yeah? And to really make that easy also as a narrative to tell um, and, and make people aware of what IOTA brings to the table now, I think, should be something that we may want to work out in that uh, next America's call. Hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Um... We're turning, uh, uh, sorry, you guys, we're turning the X team into a uh, ISCP call into a, America's call. Didn't mean to do that, but you're right. I mean, uh, we get a lot of people there and I'll give more time to digest it. And um, it's, I, I don't really, it, it doesn't really seem like we can separate uh, uh, tokenomics from this smart contracts discussion. There's so the interplay is there, right? So pretty strong. So, um, 
unless somebody disagrees on that, I think it's just important we do that. Um, I mean, I, I think what Alex said there was spot on because what the smart contracts give us is the ability to create and no matter how good the, you know, the IOTA 2.0 and the consensus and everything is, you can't create with it. You can create with smart contracts. You can make stuff, and, and that's where uh, everyone that sees that is out there, and it's only going to get more and more as more functionality is built into ISCP. So it's that's spot on. Yep. yep. Cool. All right. Um, any comments out there? Um, Alex has done a good job of explaining things. Anybody else um, have um, anything else they want to add, change direction on what we're doing? Um, I, I feel like this meeting is not one where we're actually uh, providing a whole lot of information like we, we try to do. Um, but um, this has just been one of those last couple of really busy two weeks for everybody, and there's been a lot to absorb. Um, I mean, I, I think from this meeting, there's I see two kind of critical things is we as X team members are to are trying to kind of assist the, the larger community with digesting the smart contracts and what to do and everything like that. And then we also are trying to help ourselves and in, in kind of planning and, and understanding exactly and making sure we as as kind of smart contract uh, I don't want to say experts, but more knowledgeable people have all the knowledge we need, and that we we help each other out in trying to to get better at working with smart contracts. So, any gaps that or areas that you guys see that we can achieve those two things? Um, Somebody going to say something? So I'm assuming that like the guys like Adamski and, and uh, Merrill, uh, you guys are probably heads deep with the uh, um, down into this uh, agri hackathon. But I, um, Merrill, have you been able to even ha have any opportunity to dive into the new tokenomics at all? Or have you just been uh, slammed with everything else? Merrill's dropped off. I think oh, it's okay. Too late. Um, but yeah, he's, he's been go. very busy with stuff. So yeah, we we haven't. We've basically the the whole smart contract NFT side of things. We've kind of taken a step back for the past week, and then yeah. we're kicking off again with everything next week. Yeah, that makes sense, and that's kind of why I sense the lull in, uh, in what we're mm. talking about right now. I mean, I I am well aware of um, many many projects that are trying to fire off right now. Um, so I um, mean, and and trying to digest all this stuff because we were just dropped. I mean, two pretty complex things. I mean, the, st the dust and the um, tokenomics together all at once uh, is a lot to absorb and digest. And so I think it's put a lot of people into analysis paralysis just for this week as well. And um, they also put out the blog about sharding as well. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's funny, right? Right, everybody. Go oh, read that's for right. A <laughs> right. And anybody who happened to be in the Pioneers thing, in the Pioneers group, um, the study materials on that literally takes hours. Yeah. So if, if you happen to participate in any of these things, it was like, oh my God, the, it's it's ridiculous. And, and you can't you can't avoid the hours because a lot of it's done in um, video, right? So you're trying to absorb the content and prepare for that stuff. So there's a lot of learning that's going on right now, and it's all been jammed in kind of like a a week and a half where everybody's kind of going, whoa. So I, and that's also a little bit uh, why I haven't been able to prepare as well as I'd like to for this meeting. So uh, just too much all at once. Um, okay, cool. Um, so I'll keep juggling and keep these balls in the air. Uh, Eric, uh, you've already been speaking. Um, do you have any other things you want to share with us? Um, are you, uh, or did we already tap you out? Um, well, I I've been uh, <coughs> head over heels in coding, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. I've done a complete refactoring of the schema tool. Um, the the code generation was uh, mostly uh, printf based, where I I generate literally statement by statement to printf, and 
and uh, that became a bit untenable for three languages. <laughs> Plus, it's it's it it becomes unreadable pretty quickly because you wow. have these these statements that that insert little things everywhere in in the code, right? You need mm -hmm. to insert names and types and and all that kind of shit. So that became really uh, uh, well bothersome to me. Uh, I, when I see patterns, I want to, to make it better. So I took my own code this time and made my own code better. <clears throat> so I turned it into more like a templated system where the the schema generator is just a kind of a, a, a little mini scripting engine that takes a template and the template contains placeholders uh, and, and certain directives. So you you can you can do silly things like you have to have conditional uh, emitting or uh, going through all the fields in a type or going through all the functions in a in a contract uh, and and have those as statements in the in the template so that it everything is there together but the template is pretty much for the rest purely the language that you're using with in the locations uh, where you need certain identifiers, you now have dollar identifier. So that's the only difference. And for the rest, it reads as the normal code, and therefore it's much easier to understand what's going on. And it turned uh, into a pretty powerful uh, scripting language as well. So uh, I can I can do very interesting things. Uh, and that was also a preparation for the next phase where I'm going to be generating even more code. So now I can use that scripting language to generate that code. And it's it's much faster that way than uh, the stupid printf uh, mm -hmm. stuff. So that, that has been most of my week. Apart from that, of course, the supporting the hackathon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yesterday, I've been looking into supporting the Wasm Edge uh, WebAssembly runtime because we're we're still using Wasm Time, but that one doesn't support GAS. Mm -hmm. uh, right. There are two other runtimes that do support GAS, and we're we are going to support GAS in the future. And uh, one is Wasmer and the other is Wasm Edge. And I have uh, VM plugins for both of them now. Um, but both of them, I am running into a problem that uh, uh, they don't uh, readily compile under Windows. And I'm a Windows developer. So that's a hurdle I need to take this week uh, to see if I can make it work. And once that hurdle has been taken, uh, we should we're probably going to switch to either of those was or was an edge mm. uh shouldn't make any difference in the way everything else works it's literally a different plugin and uh and it runs uh, the same code in the same way but then of course we uh, immediately have gas support and that is part of the next uh <clears throat> the next cycle we're going to be uh, supporting gas because you have to at some point uh, there there's two ways of of dealing with runaway programs one is uh, timeout which is very crude and the other one is uh, is gas and uh, that allows you to uh, add some economic incentive to it if if necessary so you you can run code without using gas, but you can also uh, set a gas for uh, for certain code to make sure that uh, that what you run as a as a node uh, isn't running out of control or using huge resources. So that's uh, definitely an, an important part. And uh, Valdes is already uh, refactoring uh, the gas into the current code base. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, one of the next developments. Are ah. you guys going to be using both, or just decide on one after you reach kind of a critical point? Uh, well, like I said, they're plugins. Uh, most of the of the was was uh, runtimes are are being actively developed. Um, 
I mean, if if I look at uh, how we started with only the Rust language, because uh, most of the other languages weren't supported properly, and then I added Tiny Go because I thought it was uh, good enough, mm-hmm. and in that year that we've been using that, both of those uh, have we have matured enormously. But also uh, other languages now start showing up and. You saw it with the assembly script. Uh, mm-hmm. Once that showed up, it was a matter of just creating it, and boom! Uh, pretty much in a few days, we we have another language that we can support. Uh, this is going to happen with the the Wasm runtimes as well. Uh, they mature pretty fast. Uh, Wasm Edge, for example, was lacking in document enormously so I pretty much had to piece things together from uh, from the code <laughs> how to use it but <clears throat> anyway uh, go go forward a few months and those things should should all resolve themselves and probably Windows support all should fall out of the tree essentially mm. right mm. yeah so, uh, i'm i'm not worried about that so uh, i mm. i will spend a little bit of time if i can't get it to work immediately i i will probably see if i can test it under uh, the windows uh, linux subsystem uh, and uh, and then forget about it for now and just keep on using wasm time because we're not using gas anyway at the moment Nice. And and the whole gas thing, uh, like everything in the, in in the whole smart contract system, uh, all all the, it's it's all par, par, parameterize parameter. They're all parameters, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you 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 can just configure how to run a smart contract uh, in all kinds of aspects, whether or not there are fees, whether or not there is gas. Uh, that that's going to be uh, another uh, really nice selling point for for iota smart contracts that you have an enormous flexibility in how you want to set them up mm-hmm. right uh, most most smart contract systems have the gas built in or have the fees built in and you can't you cannot even configure them right so that's that's going to be yeah huge i think that yeah, huge you're kind of at the whim of whatever that fee is. But in our case, yeah. you can set that fee closer to what the actual costs are and say, oh, okay, well, we want it to be X percent more than our costs. And you can do that and it can be yeah. constant. And yeah, that's that's going to be huge, I think. And the differentiator I see is that with uh, you know having the gas there at the chain level, you can just set that up and then it's kind of inherent versus having to program it into all the different smart contracts that you create at least that's how i understand it is that correct uh yeah it's 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 literally it can literally be uh, done on a, on a contract basis mm-hmm. so uh you can you can have uh, the same uh, nodes run different uh, smart contract chains and within each chain uh, there are some global parameters for the chain, and then per smart contract you can have different parameters. So it's 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 literally mix and match, uh, however you want it. Uh, okay, that's nice. Really nice. So it looks like we've actually had a few uh, new folks uh, show up, um, and I appreciate guys uh, showing up. I just I'll, I'll kind of just really briefly restate what we kind of covered. Um, I mentioned the mentoring program. Um, we have everybody who um, is looking for a mentor and no mentor. So Mer- Merrill just stepped up, said he'll be a mentor. Anybody else who thinks that they could uh, be a mentor for a group, um, let me know because I'm actually, you know, that'll allow us to kind of help divide and conquer projects um, to maybe just assign like, okay, these four people go with this mentor, the, these other four with the other mentor, and then kind of like work together um, either on whatever we decide to do. Work on a DAO from the Pioneers team, or just take on uh, maybe converting some um, uh, smart contracts from other DAOs, whatever it may be that we take on. Um, but that way we can do that because having a project for you guys to be aligned with, I find is the quickest way for you guys to go from zero to sixty. Um, um, that way, to align with a project, so you have a project, to, you know, problems to solve and kind of work together as a team. Um, 
So you can DM me if you want to be a mentor um, or, or a mentee. <laughs> uh, mentor or apprentice, I don't know how we want to frame that, but please uh, go ahead and DM me on that stuff. Um, I also uh, mentioned briefly that the Pioneers group is, uh, there are several different groups that are aligning right now to maybe form um, um, DAOs themselves or DAOs for the uh, Pioneer program itself. That goes on for six weeks. So I introduced the idea of possibly um, having uh, ICP groups maybe teaming up with uh, the DAO projects that are looking to kind of build a DAO. And that might be actually kind of uh, a interesting um, uh, way to approach um, helping both the X team ICP group a lot as well with the you know whole world of DAOs um, in our uh, ecosystem. Um, on the AMA, what we were going to do just didn't have enough cycles for everybody to get to it. Was we're going to uh, uh, we wanted to kind of go through the AMA and just kind of talk about snippets about uh, of the latest tokenomics, what they mean, how things can be used, new, uh, you know, all the new attributes and such that were delivered. Um, uh, no time for that today. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about that in the Americas group, and we'll be able to have. Uh, I'll do my best to kind of set that all up so that we can have a pretty fruitful discussion. So I encourage any of you guys uh, on, on the Americas group, I mean, to join the Americas group this Thursday. 6 p.m. Pacific, because I think you'll get, uh, hopefully it'll be uh, pretty meaningful. Uh, I know that Philo will be there, maybe um, uh, maybe Eric can be there, but other people, maybe from IF, will actually be there to help us kind of uh, answer some of those questions. And uh, we've kind of just shared what uh, Eric uh, talked about. Um, so that's pretty much all I have, but before I kind of just uh, end this, do you is there anybody here that wants to um say introduce any other ideas concepts or uh something for discussion right. uh sure sure i'd i'd like to introduce something i'm i'm just trying to get people together in the iota environment that are interested in uh decentralized finance uh you know, there, there's kind of been a lot of explosion in DeFi in the last couple months and a bunch of different new protocol ideas, different ways of looking at liquidity and, and how kind of the whole, you know, an in, entire environment can, can be benefited from having these, these new liquidity ideas. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to put together a Discord just for people who are interested in DeFi and IOTA to just talk and kind of exchange ideas and maybe build something together that's, you know, uh, open source, um, hopefully with a DAO kind of governance structure and then just kind of see what happens once, you know, a lot of smart people are in the room talking together. Yeah. That's so a really yeah, great idea. Have... I encourage people yeah. to check that out. Yeah. By the way, what DM me if you're interested oh, or go ahead. Alex, you were thinking you were saying something and you kind of did the push to talk thing again. So if you could give it a yeah. go again. Yeah, I'm pressing as hard as I can. Um, <laughs> I had my two breakfast eggs now, so maybe I'm uh, going to make it. Um, so one thing that just this, this comment from Dave, I think it was regarding DeFi. We also talked about looking at porting some popular uh, smart contract applications, especially in DeFi, over to IOTA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm like asking what does it take to do that and have we um, explored which ones would make sense? Is it like new companies that should be formed or is it existing uh, um, existing projects that we should entice to move over to IOTA? How do we think about that? You know, that's a great question because we'd introduce that concept. I think uh, Camus basically has some really good thoughts on this. Uh, so I'm I'm uh, going to lean on you, Camus, because you're kind of with what you're, what you're doing a little bit. You're kind of going that way a little bit, right? Yeah. So so far, from what I've seen in the DeFi space, the most successful projects are those that organize kind of themselves in a DAO structure, and you know keep everything open source and and keep everything you know out of the business world to some extent, and have it have it really more of like a, a autonomous 
organization and a lot of them have you know leaders that are kind of anonymous so that they can't they're outside of the realm of regulation but but beyond all that i think that um i think it'd be really powerful to have something that's that's iota native uh, oh yeah kind of spring up in the in uh, when smart tra- contracts come to the mainnet because then it's not really like another protocol from a different environment reaching out to just try to suck liquidity out of our environment but it's rather you know something that's built for the community here with the intention of growing the community here and, and kind of just benefiting everybody, giving everybody here DeFi options. So, yeah, that's, those are just my thoughts on the matter. Yeah. Oh, and, and one last thing is, is, is we do kind of have like an idea of the first kind of protocol that we wanted to look at, like porting over and, and mm-hmm. taking part and kind of restructuring. And that's Ohm. I'm not sure if you guys have looked into Olympus protocol, but it, it's a, a new DeFi 2.0 idea called protocol owned liquidity where basically there's this bonding structure where people uh, basically give their liquidity to the protocol in exchange for uh, uh, governance tokens so the protocol owns liquidity over time so it doesn't get uh, sapped away or something it is very a cool idea um feel free to drop a link or just a message within this group and just talk so that the the name is known so that people can go you know say hey what did Kama say and just like you know hey oh oh i'm okay so they can look at it um yeah i would encourage people to uh, reach out to Kamas. he's he's got a a new group that's really quite cool um and once again if this is all the whole concept of bringing over something from uh you know, another environment, bringing over something that exists on other chains um, and bringing them to the, make them um, IOTA native. Um, and of course, that involves, as he just said here, um, it involves our smart contracts, but it also involves the DAOs, right? Uh, and the concept of DAOs. So what, we're, what we are, and this is why I'm kind of uh, like gravitating to this idea about having our group work on uh, smart contract smart contracts for DAOs and maybe helping the pioneer group, there certainly could be um, uh, the same concept for, for Canvas's idea, right? Um, it could be Ohm, right? Um, or, or something of that nature. I so. mean, like the comment of not sucking liquidity out of the IOTA network, but also, I guess, um, when you actually implement it natively, there's also the opportunity now to think how can you actually make these protocols better these applications better using the unique features of iota right and well, therefore sure. actually compete with yeah, those guys yeah i think the intent um and in every every one of these that I've, when i've spoken to people about it is okay let's let's make sure we can do what they're doing over there just with with within our um, native code and uh but then uh expand and 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 basically uh, use the enhanced features of of our smart contracts right to to one up everybody and just use the advantages that are inherent in them, um, you know. And um, it's kind of funny. Uh, I think with the way the tokenomics paper what it delivered, there's actually functionality uh, in there um, that can be used in different ways that maybe Diva can benefit from too. You know, nested stuff and 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 things like that that have crossed my mind, but haven't fully explored yet. So, you know, the whole fact that you can have an NFT that can own another NFT. And you have foundries and all that kind of stuff. It actually like it could significantly impact uh, that space. Just not sure how it would happen yet. But that's kind of why we're all here to explore. I did so. actually have a question on that as well. If there is anybody here who who understands it, how does that work? The NFT owning an NFT owning an NFT like nesting NFTs. You explained I'm, it perfectly. That's how it's done, right there. Yeah, but but how does it work? <laughs> Like, is it smart contract controlled? Is it like baked into the protocol? Like, it's it's never been done before, obviously. So it's mind blowing. Um, yeah. So anybody involved in that who understands how it works, if there's like a simple way of explaining it, like, is is the identifier an address? Is like it is an address. Okay. You, uh, so an NFT is just like any other address. So, so just like your wallet, like you have an address, it is, it has, from what I understand, it has all of the features and same capabilities as, as you do as an individual with your wallet. So wh- when you create an NFT, you're creating basically a wallet without a key. 
Dave, can you help me out on this one? I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah, this, in this. This is what I'm trying to understand because it, it's just mind blowing. And yeah, I, I really haven't found a, a very simplified description of how it all works anywhere yet. Yeah, so and where, this is knows. what we're going to try to delve into on the AMA when, um, because uh, we just got this stuff right, and and they were yeah. kind of talking, but I, I I actually I'm gonna have to watch this thing like three times to make sure that I get all the pieces, and then and then we'll still need to have people from the IF to come and tell it to us because they've been able to they've been sitting on this and reviewing this for the last six seven weeks or more, and everyone that I've talked talked to in the IF has said, look, it took them multiple passes and multiple discussions for them to just get their items around the uniqueness and the, and, the, and just like the, the infinite less amount of things it seems to introduce in possibility. Um, it's, yeah, it's, we're, it's, we're, it's we're, mind we're boggling. Redeveloping, we're redeveloping the game because of this. Like yeah, we're, we're yeah. like changing how it all works because yeah, of this. Yeah, we were literally, um, my it's group has crazy. been working on something too. And we, we basically had a light paper that was ready to go. And we actually had to re, just make sure that we sat back and took a pause to make sure that we didn't have to rethink everything because of these new capabilities, right? So it's it's really quite interesting from that perspective. The, the way you can look at NFTs are essentially, they are like colored tokens with metadata. Mm. And the metadata defines what it is and where it comes from and who can process it and and when it was created by who or that things like that you can add to it and so they're just uh used as uh as regular tokens they're first class citizens at level one mm -hmm. so you can just have them in your wallet and you uh, you can transfer them to other people in a normal way like you like you transfer normal normal tokens and uh it's it's as with everything in crypto. If you have the key, then uh, then you own it, right? If it's on a on a U on a UT, UTXO that you control with your private key, then you own it. And so yeah. an NFT itself, I don't know. How, uh, I haven't looked into the recursive NFT thing uh, because that's pretty a pretty new one to me as well. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, uh, the whole concept of foundries and such is mind blowing. Uh, yes, it really the is. The, the fact that you can just have a special uh, address that generates uh, tokens out of thin air that are first class IOTA citizens mm -hmm. and can be transferred just like any other token, right? At level one, so you you don't have any any uh, barriers there to what you can do with them it's it's literally every everything is as fungible as possible yeah that is what's so crazy um um yeah the Dansky, you know one unique thing that um if i have this right that seems unique is uh, to me is um you know with nfts right you want to make sure that it's an original right and um so you can set a setting i, I guess with the attributes within an nft to say like it's there's only one created in the smart contract over 100 years uh, if I have that right, so it's uh, so so um, you know uh, it prevents people from being able to like get around schemes to um, produce dep you know duplicates, um, just yeah, all well, kinds that, of crazy that's things. Not, that's not the issue in the NFT space, though. The okay. issue in the NFT space is you can take the piece of art and mint it as an NFT and claim it as an original. So the issue that that occurs and We've seen this, um, Meryl and myself, as we've been researching in different ecosystems, how their NFT look drops work, how their policies work and things like that. Yeah. And the, the biggest issue is without some policy ID, without some sort of registry where you can assign a, a cryptographic or, or just a hash to your collection that you can control, um, then there's there's no way of verifying and the the marketplaces only go off these verification systems so for example on on cardano they have the policy id system on solana they have um they have a creator wallet address system um so when you create the collection 
you you bake the policy ID into the NFT meta, metadata or the mm -hmm. or the the originator wallet address. So if you're first to create something and you register that with a marketplace, then it's the verified collection. But if somebody else copies your collection and verifies it first, then you might be the creator and somebody else has verified the collection. Yes, yeah, like in real estate name. or something like that is who registers yeah. first, right? First in, first in. Yeah, right. Um, yes. So that, that's, that's the issue in, in origin and, and collection control. So in this case, so that needs to be baked in like. So the, the NFT, NFT has its own address, so it's written to the tangle. That solves that issue, right? Well, I'm sure it was brilliant. It was brilliant, I'm sure. Yeah. The issue it, it's great it's great for creators who who create unique so one for one unique mm -hmm. and that's that's why solana works really well because you have a creator wallet address and that goes you you create all your nfts from that wallet address you register the wallet address and everybody knows that you're the creator because you have control of the wallet but that's for one collection so if if i do a collection of say portraits that's my yep. portrait collection so that uh -huh. has a collection id and then if i want to do another collection then i've got to go and, and set up another wallet and and do another and if, if you're releasing 10 15 20 collections it gets a bit cumbersome whereas the way the way cardano does it is is they have um a policy identification system where you where you control the code and you you verify it with with the policy registry and then you get your policy ID and you bake that into the the metadata of the NFTs when you mint. So one collection has one policy ID and then you just create a new policy ID for the next collection. So well Dave this is I mean basically uh, it seems to me what was just des described by Damsky here with the fact that we can, an NFT, right? It's writ written to the tangle. It, it it has its own address and it can own an infinite, a number. Well, I don't know if the number infinite, <laughs> like. Um, don't ever uh, use the word infinite. <laughs> right, right, right. And a, a, a lot, a, a hell of a lot of uh, NFTs itself, right? So in that way, isn't it the same as uh, accomplishing the policy uh, that was just discussed here? So I have one NFT that owns many other NFTs, and they're all tied to that. So or is it uh, maybe that could be used or leveraged in the same way? Yeah, no, no. I'm just we're just look. We're just learning about this right now, right? You know what I'll try to do is um, um I don't I'll try to see if we can figure out this answer by our meeting. I don't know if we'll be able to pull it off, but we'll try to I'll try to reach out to um the IF people and see if we could actually discuss this because this is a really cool thing. Like how do we in stack all, up with policy by Cardano, right? I mean as far as all, that. In all honesty though, I think that could solve it. Um your suggestion, Greg, where before you create your individual NFTs that are part of your collection, mm -hmm. you create like a master nft right that is your collection so your collection is this nft and, and it's just whatever label that, you put on it that's, frankly that's right your policy id and then you can put that that wallet address in the metadata of the the nfts that you create as well so when it goes to a marketplace 
they have that collection address verified in some public registry or whatever, or you, you go to their website and you input the data or whatever. Um, I think, I think it, I mean, I think it, it, to me, it seems like it works. And then the other attribute that you can set on that NFT is that, that there's only a quantity one and it's good for, uh, and for the next 100 years. So you kind of even have another layer, le level of um, like immutable, well, uh, right? For, and not being copied, indefinitely. right? Indefinitely. There would no, there would be no time limit on it. It would be until right. Well, I, I think that there might be some, some reason technically, but at least you can do um, until you have Alzheimer's and you can't remember. Right. So, um, uh, how long it goes? Right. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. And I am, I'm, I'm clearly I'll probably morphing stuff cause uh, I'm, you know, there's so much that I just tried to, so much that we just had to learn right now. It's like, I'm probably, that's, that's typical for me, but, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a whole one to many thing that's in a con that's in a tied to an NFT. It's like, bam, you got it there. So. It seems extremely pliable. So. I think also, though, before we get too excited, we have to really like stand back and, and evaluate it. Because there, there could be so many other things. Like, because for example, I could, I could still copy an entire collection of somebody, mint, uh, mint uh, an NFT as the same name as the collection, and then duplicate the collection and register that wallet as the collection with an NFT marketplace. So there's got to be some form of of registry system, um, because mm. otherwise it, it it doesn't really solve anything. Because anybody can still just replicate that, so it's it's really exciting. The potential is huge, um, especially when it comes to NFTs owning NFTs. Because when we go into metaverse and gaming, that's just blown my mind. Yeah, because, it uh, really was. A folk, a folk can now own its weapons. A folk can own its armor. How freaking crazy is that? Like, it's nuts. Yeah, I am. This is this is a fun one to discuss. So I'll see if we can, we can cook this up by Thursday. Yeah, yeah, really, because Cardano's the representative sample, right? That does does it well, right? So, um, I would maybe pose the question um, to IF and say, "Hey, like, we think that this matches, right?" And um, uh, see if we can come up with some more info. And too, too bad this is all slammed with what you got going on. Um, Adamski with so everything going on right now. Yeah, like they, literally, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we we we've got a hackathon and a, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Country. How dare you? And then the same week, it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the ICO, like, ecosystem explodes, and I'm just like, seriously, I'm gonna be like two weeks behind everybody else, and everybody's yeah. gonna be like, oh, it's the future. I'm like, what, what, what's the future? Like, back to the future, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was like, don't announce anything this weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. they, they, they were just yeah. holding everything back to the birthday and then they were like, just let everything go. Yeah, yeah, that's true, huh? Good thinking there. So I will I will try to see if we can actually get a better uh, answer to that. I'm actually pretty um, intrigued by it. I think um, the best bet is uh, Levin the Pop. The, yeah, the, uh, yeah, and I think the have. best strategy I have to get that answer is to have Eric Hop ask Levin. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Having a little fun, but I actually know that there's truth to that. So um, I will, uh, you know, Eric, maybe if you can help us run run that down. Um, 
I think you yeah. clearly understand what we just stated um, probably better than we do. So, um, um, you would be surprised, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give you five minutes if you can do TypeScript a in a lot, weekend. A lot yeah. what, when I yeah. hear you guys talking, when, because I un, I understand what these uh, these building blocks that we now have these these unlock uh, token system with with small scripts that that define how to unlock it. Right, so mm -hmm. you 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 can do different things. And it's very, it's very powerful, and as, especially for the smart contracts, it's it's essential, right? Uh, it's it's the only way how we can uh, have a fixed address uh, and uh, regenerate a committee, so rotate a committee that has, by definition, a new collective key but still have the contract located on the same address, yeah. right? So, so you can rotate it, the committee, it's literally the a, a way change. to associate right. an, an other address with, with an address to unlock it, mm -hmm. right? So you can, you can transfer tokens from address, you have the key to address A, and that allows you to move the tokens on address B because address B is been has been defined as an alias address that uh, that can be unlocked by A, right? So that that kind and all those kinds of little building blocks they're hugely interesting to me, but then I hear how you guys start running with it. Uh, and building stuff with it, and that's on a whole different level. And then I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get lost together. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is what like things like hackathons are for, Eric. Like, yeah. Like we saw on the weekend, the hackathons aren't just to teach um, community and ecosystem developers on how to work with the protocol. It also helps really quickly find bugs and, and issues within the protocol. I mean, we we must have sorted out at least three or four, four um, really quick issues, um, or some not so quick as you're still working on them. Um, but yeah, like it helps the ecosystem and it helps the IF as well. So yeah. um, I think I think sure. putting together a few few hackathons over the next um, six months would, would really also be a good idea at some point. Yeah. And that's damn well going to happen with this new token framework. <laughs> that's going to just be, uh, yeah, that's just, it's, it's they've made a, a, it's such a flexible system. It's going to be uh, so amazing what is, is created. It's pretty exciting. So, okay. Um, so we'll, we have our marching orders um, on what we're going to try to get done in our group. Um, I appreciate all you guys um, kind of, uh, hanging out and putting up with us. Um, come to our AMA meeting and maybe we'll have an answer. That'll be my teaser on this Thursday evening. Um, and please um, reach out and say, hey, I want to be a mentor um, or a, an apprentice, um, you know, so that we can actually get this thing going. Um, and make any recommendations. Um, you know, this is this is Greg Martin every week, just uh, every other week, trying to figure out how I can help get things going. Um, but so I'm, but I can't do everything. So um, it's up to you guys to help me kind of like do that. So. Yeah. And we have a lot of the same activists, like we have the same go to people. And what we really need to do is expand our go to people. Right. So. Um, you know, Merrill's always stepping up, but he can't, there's only one of him, right? So let, let's make sure that we get some other people involved. Camus, I really appreciate you, what you, uh, uh, you know, talked about today. Um, so let's just kind of, let, let's kind of build on that. So, 
I will uh, kind of leave it there, you guys, and we'll uh, talk to you guys in two weeks, or if not, on the Americas group on Thursday. All right, thanks. We'll talk to you guys later.